Hello, 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 hello everyone. It's great to be back again on a Thursday evening. This is my favourite time of the week talking to you lot. So let me know if you're on. Uh, I can see the comments, they've just popped up. So yeah, let me know if you're here. I love knowing who's on. Drop me a comment. Tell me that you're in the building live. Um, if you're watching this on replay, then just let me know that you're watching it on replay as well. Um, if you are here live, say hello. Say hello. I can see. I can see. Um, and there's quite a few of you jumped on already. Oh, hello, Paula. Hello, hello. Yeah, let me know if you're here or who you are. Um, oh, Nat's here. Hello. Um, so, Emma's in the building. Sally's in the building. I've got loads of energy today, right? It's absolutely off, off the scale, crazy energy. So I do apologise if I'm a little bit wacko today. Um, I've had a few coffees and I don't normally have this many and I feel a bit woo. Hello, Jenny and Laura. Nice to have you all on. Um, so yeah, we're going to talk today about what we should be cutting out of our diet. Now, this is a bit of a weird one to talk about because I bet you probably read it and thought, oh, so I should be cutting things out of my diet then, shouldn't I? We're going to go through some stuff. Um, there are exceptions to the rule, but in the grand scheme of things, do we have to cut things out of our diet? Do, do you be honest and there's no judgment because I'm here to help coach you. There's no wrong and right. Um, but... Even, this could be societal, like through society or the media or whatever. Are we led to believe that we're meant to cut things out of our diet? Yes, we are. You know, there was a big thing about carbs, weren't there, at one point? That like, carbs are the enemy and people believe that we cut carbs out of our diet and we lose weight. Um, and then fat was the enemy. Uh, low fat diet, low fat. I'll tell you the secret, right? There's a secret here, and I'm going to share it with you all because you're all special to me, and I really want to. I really want to tell you all. The reason you lose weight when you cut out fat or carbs is because you've just cut out calories. I said it. I, ju I said that. The reason that you lose weight when you cut out carbs or cut out fat is because you've actually just cut out calories. So that's just something for you to bear in mind before we go into this. Yeah? Carbs are not the enemy. We need them for energy. Carbs are not the enemy. And neither is fat. We need fat. We need enough fat in this diet because it comes with health benefits, vitamins, minerals. They call micronutrients. And we need these. We need them. Our bodies need them. Yeah? So... There are a couple of exceptions to the rule when it comes to cutting things out as diets, right? Only a few, not many of them. Number one, if you've got an intolerance to something, yes, you're going to cut that out. If you're intolerant to something, of course you're going to cut that out. You're not going to eat it and it makes you uncomfortable. However, however, there's another side to this one that I am going to address. And I've heard it a lot during my career as a personal trainer, coach. People say, oh, I don't eat bread because it makes me bloated, right? For some people, that's legit. However, for a lot of people, let's say you don't eat a lot of bread or um, sort of like like pizza, dough, doughy, do you know that sort, that sort of stuff? You don't eat a lot of it. But then when you do, you eat a lot of it in one go and you get bloated. That's not an intolerance. That's not eating a lot of it in one go. So we've got to have, a, there's, there's a fine line, yeah? I, I, if I went and had, I don't eat a lot of bread. I'll have like two slices in the morning with my eggs on or whatever. But if I went and had a Domino's, 12-inch, 14-inch or whatever, on a Saturday night, I would be bloated. And it's not because I've got an intolerance. It's because I've just had a 14-inch pizza with that much dough. That's why. So you've got to be realistic. Like, have you just overeaten it or are you actually intolerant to it? 
So just put that one out there because I hear it a lot. And normally it's just because you're eating a lot of it. Um, another thing, obviously, if you've got allergies, if you've got allergies, then we will cut out whatever you're allergic to. And the other one, the other one is if you have an uncontrollable urge to eat this thing. That is the only time I will say to, to cut it out. For example, um, if you bought, I'm going to do mine, right? I'm going to do mine. I'm going to share with you what mine is. If I buy a sharing bag of Doritos, I'm not going to have a handful. Put it that way. I'm having the lot. That is an uncontrollable food for me. So I don't buy it. I don't eat them unless I'm, I'm willing to eat the full sharing bag. <laughs> And we all have these trigger foods. It might be biscuits. You might like um, uh, chocolate biscuits, let's say. And if you buy them in, you know you're going to eat the lot. Maybe let's not buy them in. Yeah, let's not buy them. But the cutting things out of your diet, the only thing that it does is it gets you into that mindset where, do you know where you have a, a chocolate biscuit or something and it's a treat? And it's a treat. And it becomes a thing that's like, oh, I can't have that because it's a treat. But then when you have it, you're going to overindulge in it because you've not had it for three weeks. It, you get into that sort of cycle where you restrict yourself from the foods that you do. You do enjoy them, but you think, oh, I can't eat bread. I can't have toast. Oh, my God, no, I can't have I can't have lurpak on toast. I'm not eating bread. Um, and then when it comes to you eating it, you eat a lot of it. And then you say you've got an intolerance to it because you're bloated. But that's not the case. It's because you've not eaten it for six weeks. Then you've had about, you know, a kilo's worth of pizza dough um, and overindulged in it. Do you get where I'm coming from? Does anybody relate to this, that you will cut something out and then when you come to have it again, you do sort of overdo it because you have missed eating it? Because I know for a fact I've cut stuff out of my diet before and then when it's come to, like, reintroducing it, I've not even reintroduced it, I've literally just... I've just gone wild on it and I've not been able to stop eating it. Um, another reason that we don't cut things out is because, you know, it's another form of suffering. Like, we're not doing this. This is not eight-week shred, 12-week shred. Like, people, we've all bought into stuff like this. But, Sally, oh, yes. Yeah. No, cut it out for, like, six weeks and then when you eat it, it's like, floodgates! Yeah, I've been there too, and I feel I feel you on that. Um, but we, this is not a this is not a six week, eight week, twelve week shred. It's life. It's life that we're talking about. Have you ever? Has anybody on here ever done an eight or a, a four, eight, six, twelve week plan? I'd love to know if you have. Has anybody done one of these like short time frame plans? And why are you doing it? You stick to it. You think, do you know what? It's eight weeks. I can do this. I can cut all that out. I'm not eating that again. And then when the eight weeks is done, or however long that you're doing it for, Sally, yeah, Paulette, but my trigger is sugar. I have such a sweet tooth. Um, it's just finding sort of alternatives, Paulette, really. Stuff that, A, you can eat a little bit more of um, without the higher calories, so like maybe the lower calorie sweet options. I mean, I know I'm, I'm probably going to sound really boring saying this, but I buy a lot of fruit in because I like a bit a bit of sweet stuff. So I have loads of fruit cut up in the fridge. And normally, by the time I've eaten a lot, a lot of fruit, I'm just like, I feel quite full. Um, but there are lower calorie alternatives. Ben and Jerry's. I love Ben and Jerry's. Could eat the whole tub. Do you know what though? I love I love Ben and Jerry's as well. They do like say like that Halo top. I know it's not Ben and Jerry's, right? But it's still ice cream. It still tastes good, and it's low. It's like God. It's like two hundred and fifty, sixty calories a pot. Let's say three hundred. Let's round it up so I'm being safe. But three hundred calories. Whereas a tub of Ben and Jerry's is probably like one thousand and something. So you're still getting your ice cream sweet fix, but you're not having a thousand and odd calories. You're having three hundred. It's a big difference. So there's always alternatives. We just sort of have to look for them. Or if you're like Emma, who I know is on here, and you like a bit of baking, then you can always sort of bake and, um, and make your own stuff. So getting back to this 8, 12 week shred thing. If you're doing that, you know, for so many weeks, you can cut stuff out. 
and it's all gravy, isn't it? It's not that bad. But we're not we're not doing this for eight weeks. We all want to get results that last forever. Like it, we don't want to be on a diet. Oh, I'm on a diet again. Oh, I'm, I'm on a diet again. Like, do you not feel like that's all all we ever saying? Yeah, I start diet on Monday. Start diet on Monday. I'm on diet. I'm on a diet. I'm on a diet. I'm on a diet. We all do it. We've all said it. And we're all constantly in that mindset that it's like diet, mindset, diet, diet. We need to get into the mindset of this is my lifestyle. So it needs to be balanced and something that I can do for life. It shouldn't be even a thing that we have to really think about. It should just be something that we just do. We can just eat sort of intuitively is the word I'm looking for. So, you know, my my advice on this one when it comes to cutting things out is cut things out that you, if it's uncontrollable for you and you know you can't just have a bit and put it away, then don't buy that. Find alternatives that you can have that are lower calories, but try not to cut stuff out because by cutting it out, it becomes a restriction. And when you restrict, you want. It's like if I said to you, don't, when you say to a kid, don't touch that hob. <laughs> Oh, it's the same thing for us, you know. Don't do that. Oh, yeah, right, fancy that now. When you cut something out, you want it more. It is just what it is. Oh, I could proper eat chocolate bar. You're only saying that because you've cut it out and it's on your mind. So never cut things out unless you are a binge eater of that thing. Yeah? If you uncontrollably eat it. Uh, Jenny, me, eight weeks. And after that eight weeks... Did it continue? But felt miserable as hell. Exactly. Exactly. Jenny's actually joined the um, Mind and Body Academy that starts on the 1st of November, ain't you, Jenny? So I'm looking forward to uh, you seeing what's in there because, yeah, you'll uh, you'll never do an eight-week diet plan ever again after that. Put it that way. Um, and you'll never be miserable doing it either. I promise you. Um, so, yeah. Thing is, you need to focus on... I know it's like one of them words that think, oh, here we go, balance. It is all about having a little bit of everything that you fancy in smaller quantities and not cutting out the things that you love. This is about a lifestyle. This is about the rest of your life. You can't cut bread out for life. You don't, you, you, I don't want to cut bread for life. I like bread. I don't want to cut a Snickers out. I like Snickers, Yeah. But I only like to have it now and again. Don't binge eat on it. So when it comes to food and having balanced meals, we have proteins, carbs, and fats. Protein is like, let's say, uh, meat, fish, eggs, that sort of stuff. We know what protein is. You've got carbs, so like rice, potato, pasta, blah, blah, blah. blah. And then we've got fats, so um, avocado, various oils, nut, nut butters. I mean, fats are contained in uh, certain meats and other things that we eat as well. But my thing is, on my plate, because I don't currently track my food, because I'm not saying it's a bad thing. To get results, it's a good thing. It's a brilliant thing. This is me personally, is that I like to eat as I go. And I like to sort of eat what visual. I'm a visual eater. So my plate will be half greenery or salad or something a quarter carbohydrates whatever that might be and then a protein source is a quarter and that for me is easy because i can go about my day to day with not much thought about it and eat as i go it doesn't work for everyone and some people need to log log the food and that's fine and if you're logging food you don't need to cut things out because you're tracking it you're not overeating if you've tracked it so Bear that in mind too. Don't cut things out that you really love. Just sort of limit them slightly unless it's a trigger food for you. Um, a lot of eating behaviour, and you probably know this, and I'm going to address this as well. A lot of, well, two things. <clears throat> a lot of eating behaviour is related to your mindset and what, how you feel about things. I mean, I'm not bashing anything here, but I am going to mention Slimming World. It does get great results for people who are quite overweight because it's telling you to eat loads of um, fresh stuff, fruit, veg, taters. You know, it is encouraging to eat good stuff. However, do you know what does me head in? The fact that they call things sins. 
sin? As if you didn't feel bad enough. Now I've just sinned. It's very, it's a mindset thing. Like we have a lot of, oh, I can't eat that. That's a tree. Well, well, not really. It can be part of your life. It doesn't have to be demonized as a sin or a treat. It's just eating. It's just eating what you like. So a lot of, a lot of it is all down to our mindset behind things and the habits that we have and the habits that we've had in the past. Does that, does that resonate with people that you think sometimes it is sort of like a, a mindset thing or we have beliefs that come from maybe the media or the news so like we believe that carbs are bad we only believe that they're bad because newspaper told us in 19 uh, in 2000s or whatever so a lot of it does like we know how to eat well don't we and i say this a lot to my clients like you know what how do you healthy eat? Well, you eat this, you eat that. You know what exercise is? Yeah, yeah. That's not the problem. I think a lot of the, the problem is that we have sort of mindset issues around the food. We have bad beliefs. We are like led to feel bad about having a sin. A glass of wine will have 20 sins. Chuffing hell, I've sinned 20 times having a glass of wine. Blooming it. And But then that, in our minds, creates a negative you are associating something negative to having something nice. It shouldn't be that. It should be a pleasurable thing like, oh, God, I really enjoyed that. Do you know what I mean? It, that was that were wonderful. Not, oh, I've eaten that chocolate bar. I've just done 20 sins. Oh, my God. It's, it's absolutely mind-blowing. It's mind-blowing. It is very much mindset. Yes, the media and social media doesn't help. Not at all. And my advice is to try not to listen too much to what you read in the newspapers, magazines, and what people say on social media, unless they're reputable. Um, because they, the thing is with um, newspapers and stuff, a catchy headline gets you to buy. So something very controversial or something about like the, something demonizing carbs or this, it's like, oh, I need to read. And it, that's all it's about, really, is getting people to read it. Um, it's not always factual. So, especially when it comes to the nutrition side of things. So, do what feels good for you and do what works for you. It's all, that's why it's like personal training, personal. It's personal to you. It, everybody's different. Um, and there's also, obviously, the stress. And I hear this one a lot, a stress eating and emotional eating. Um, they're two very big things. And again, that is... It's a mindset thing because we are associating sort of a stressful or emotional event with food. And it's detaching that and addressing the emotional issue and getting it away from the food, which is something that needs working on as well. But when it comes to cutting things out, I want you all to try not to cut things out in excess because all it does, it makes you want them more. Um unless you're a binge eater of this thing. So hormonal eating, yeah, yeah. And you know what? I feel you, my time of the month, it's the week before for me. Oh my good God, ravenous, absolutely ravenous. And I know this sounds probably a little bit, but do you know how I try and overcome this? I refuse to buy anything that I know I'm gonna, unless I think, right, Daisy, you can have a chocolate bar, let's say it's this big. <laughs> You can have this chocolate bar and this is what you can have. And I'm like, right, I'm nom nom. <laughs> I love that. Um, but I won't go and buy some, I won't go to the shop and say, right, I'm going to buy that chocolate bar and get that, that, that. Because I know I'm going to eat it all. So it's like damage limitation. Like I'm going to have this because I really fancy it, but I'm not going to go and buy this, this, and this because I know I will eat it. Um, so it's sort of like putting the um barriers in place like right i'm gonna let myself go this far and then i'm gonna stop there um that that is one of my main tips to help with that um, and I'm, i think a lot of people can probably resonate with the hormonal eating uh, it, it's like it's like something's possessed you in it it's like something's possessed you um so i fully get i fully get that <clears throat> so i'm gonna wrap it up there so now you know what you should be cutting out of your diet. Um, not much, really. Keep it in, unless it's a trigger food for you. Um, I'll be on again next week. 
<laughs> need to put kids' chocolate under lock and key. Yeah, why don't you get it under lock and key? Give them keys and not you. Or put a code on it that you don't know and the kids know. <laughs> um, or put it somewhere where you can't see it. So, yeah, I'll be back on next week. I'm going to do another topic. I've actually thought of this topic, right? And I think it might be quite interesting. Hmm, it's something that's nutrition-based again. Um, so I'm thinking of doing that. It's something that I hear a lot as well, so I think it'll be quite interesting. Uh, but if you have got recommendations, please remember you can just message me and tell me what you want me to talk about because I'll deep dive on that. Um, obviously, we've got the Academy that's opening on the 1st of November, which I'm really excited about. Um, it's very different to what's ever been done before. There's going to be training modules and workbooks and deep diving on all the things that I talk about in all of these videos. It's all going to be in there. You'll also be getting coaching from me on Zoom together like this. So it's going to be it's going to be special. I know that much. And I know some of you have inquired and I know that some of you have signed up. Um, it starts on the 1st of November. It is mandatory to do 12 weeks. And the reason it's mandatory for 12 weeks is because I want to make sure you've got all the tools so after 12 weeks you can leave that academy and you're well on your way. You're well on your way and you'll never have to do another eight-week shred or another diet plan again. That is the goal. You all leave self-sufficient with a solid mindset, strong confidence, goals, off we go. So that is the goal of that, is anybody who comes in leaves after 12 weeks a self-sufficient human being and you can run with it without having to do another diet plan ever again, yeah? So there is an early bird price on it. The price will go up on the 1st of November. So the early bird price will go up on the 1st of November. Anybody that does join before then as well will get a recipe book. Um, complimentary, so you will have a little recipe book sent, and there's some other little fun goodies that are going to be coming throughout the uh, the first 12 weeks as well. Um, we will be going deep diving into goals, I've been recording that today, the modules are really good, so I can't wait to see that, and the workbooks as well, um, overcoming all your obstacles, getting skyrocketing confidence, um, getting over the BS that you tell yourself, getting rid of them limiting beliefs, and like I say, you will never have to do a diet plan ever again. I am 100% confident in that. So, if you do want any information on it, or if you do want to sign up, or if you do want to know what options there are for paying for it, then let me know. I'll send it all through to you. The first 10 people get the early bird discount. Um, and so there are spaces left for early bird. Um, and if you've got any questions, fire them across and I can answer them for you. But on that note, this is the longest live I've done on a Thursday night. Um, I'll see you all next Thursday for another wonderful topic. And if you've got any questions for me in the meantime, shoot me a message and I'll get back to you. But thanks everyone for coming on and I'll see you all soon. Bye.